Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael O'Malley here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 12th, 2020, recorded around 1.52 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, out here in the Eastern Pacific Basin, and we're starting out here today because this is going to give us a lot of clues into what is going to happen in the Atlantic Basin over the next few weeks or so. What I mean by that is you can see a myriad of activity out here, just a tropical cyclone outbreak across the Eastern Pacific Basin, a former Hurricane Alita out here now beginning to rapidly weaken as it generally heads into cooler and more unfavorable waters. Two tropical cyclones out here that are likely to develop and another one behind that. This one will have to watch for potential land uh, threats right now to portions of the Mexican and Central American coastlines. And this little system out here heading into the Central Pacific Basin. Now, what I mean by this could give us a lot of clues. Well, let's look at why this is developing. Well, our first stop today is the Mount and Julian Oscillation. This comes from Michael Ventris, and he's a PhD major. Talked about this before. Um, but again, you can see, and just real quickly to, to kind of touch on what's what, these... Uh, these reds in here, this is your sinking branch of the Mount and Julian Oscillation. It basically has two branches, a positive and a negative phase. Right now, the Atlantic Basin is in a negative phase or a sinking branch in the atmosphere. This typically suppresses hurricane activity and rising air in the atmosphere. Well, conversely, your blues and purples, this is all your rising air in the atmosphere that typically enhances hurricane development. Now, all of this burst of activity in the Eastern Pacific Basin is mainly coming from this Mount and Julian Oscillation that's now passing over the Eastern and Central Pacific Basin. This is helping to spark all of this. And you can see that this is roughly still on about the same latitude or, you know, roughly about the same, you know, latitude and longitude as the uh, Gulf of Mexico, the Southern Bay of Campeche down here. So... You know, while, yes, most of the activity right now is focused in the Eastern Pacific Basin, again, you know, right now, this will be eventually crossing basins and moving into the Atlantic. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Your rising air is over the Eastern Pacific and Central Pacific areas over here. This is all your rising air. This typically uh, would help to produce tropical cyclones. That's these hurricane symbols down here. And all your sinking air, this rising air is going up over here, that transposes and, and transponds to a sinking correlation in the Atlantic Basin. And that's what we're seeing right now with this Matt and Julian Oscillation being currently unfavorable in the in the Atlantic Basin. But if we go down here to the end of the forecast period from August 20th through the 26th, you notice a pretty big change here. All of this uh, sinking air in the atmosphere leaves Africa and leaves uh, the Atlantic Basin that completely leaves this area. And now that's going to kind of cause another cycle. This sinking branch is going to now move over the Indian Ocean and move into the Western Pacific Basin. Your rising air is now going to move into the Western Atlantic and then over Africa and then into the Indian Ocean. It's a continuous cycle. So this will eventually come over to this area and then that will come over to this area roughly and through here by about you know early September ish that is going to cause a lot of tropical cyclones more than likely to break out across the Atlantic Basin what we're seeing right now in the Pacific in the Eastern Pacific is a pretty big telltale sign of what's to come in the Atlantic Basin and for reference, when all your rising air now is transposed over the Atlantic Basin, your sinking air is over the Central and Eastern Pacific Basins. With that being said, again, it's not as simple as that in the thermodynamic environment, but we should start to see a pretty big burst of activity in the Eastern Pacific like we're seeing now. That will be transposed into the Western Atlantic first and then the Atlantic Basin as a whole as we close out the month of August and then move into September. So what's going on out there across the Atlantic Basin right now? Well, we do have something, in fact, in a suppressive state, though, the Mount and Julian Oscillation. This is a Tropical Depression 11 uh, designated at the 5 o'clock uh, advisory 
package last night. This is now a tropical depression expected to become Tropical Storm Josephina. Uh, and over the next few days, this is expected to gradually move off towards the west and then eventually northwest. And again, this is not this is going to be uh, passing north of most of the islands. And for direct impacts to the islands, I'll get into that here in just a second. But most of the islands aren't going to really have any problems with this at all. The far southern islands, as you'll see here in a minute by the graphics that I kind of put out, the these uh, southern islands down here, really from Barbados southward, have no risk of seeing uh, this becoming a, a substantial threat for that area. Again, not really expecting there to be much of a threat at all for that. And then eventually, this big dome of high pressure out here is going to start to break down. You're going to start getting a little bit of troughiness coming through here that's going to allow uh, for uh, what will be Josephina more than likely to kind of come up and round that ridge and more than likely not be of any significant land concern at all uh, for the United States. But again, we'll keep monitoring the progress of this, you know, just in case, uh, but not expecting anything significant right now. So this is the visible satellite coming from tropicaltippets.com and a couple of things that we got to point out here. First of all, this is, believe it or not, our low level center right here. It's a little bit better organized than it was yesterday, but again, there's not a lot of convection, deep convection that is. Now, we have some deep convection off towards the north of the center, but mostly our center of circulation is actually completely devoid and you can see it. Uh, kind of spinning in through there. So our center is actually devoid of any convection, has a little bit of convection off towards the north, a little bit to the south, and then this kind of big feeder band, if you will, of activity uh, stretching into the uh, portions, you know, of the north and northeast of the system. And that's kind of wrapping around, but it's not really completely wrapping. So one of the problems is that there's a, there is still some easterly shear being impinged on the system, and that was really hindering it yesterday. Last time we talked yesterday, that was also kind of hindering it. Now we have convection trying to fire closer to the center and not directly to the uh, west of the center, but we still don't have uh, convection right over the center, and that is kind of hindering significant organization and intensification. This is also helping to induce some dry mid-level air into the system as well. That The easternly shear is also helping some of the dry air to kind of be engulfed and you can kind of see just a big flame of um, this drier mid-level air kind of being uh, sucked into the system basically. So not a lot of convection around right now. Um, however, this is still a tropical cyclone regardless and it will likely become Josephina. Um, again, this easternly shear is expected to relax that's going to help to kind of build a, a little bit more of a established inner core. That's going to help to, you know, drive uh, more thunderstorms closer to the center. And then it's basically just a positive feedback loop from there. Uh, but this should help in, in some response to kind of lower the pressures and a surface flux environment should kind of uh, then pick up from there. But again, right now, no significant uh, organization and convection near the center. And you can really see this here. This is from the College of DuPage Cod Meteorology website. This is the mid-level water vapor. And real quickly, these uh, oranges and yellows is your dry air and your greens and blues is your, uh, your more moisture available in the atmosphere. That's your moisture content, basically. And you can kind of see how we have a pretty decent tropical wave, albeit elongated, coming off of Africa now. That is also induced by some easternly shear that's kind of being uh, imparted. That's also what is helping to kind of keep these thunderstorms uh, kind of away from the center. But you can kind of see how these thunderstorms do kind of ramp up from time to time. And that's expected. These tropical cyclones, and you can really see kind of briefly that some of this dry air kind of axis is basically uh, in front of the system and then a little bit kind of the, even behind the system. And again, this is pretty typical uh, of these uh, tropical cyclones that are dealing with, um, you know, dry air and shear. It goes through a bursting pattern. And we're kind of seeing another burst of activity right now that is a cons or close to being consolidated on the northern part of the center. Another little burst of activity there. We're not really seeing these big cumulus clouds indicating that we're going to see a pretty massive burst of convection. 
Uh, but regardless, there is still some easterly shear, some dry air, and that should kind of help keep it in check a little bit. And a reason why that is, we had this enhanced Kelvin wave that passed over a couple of days ago. That's kind of what kick-started what was 95L, now Tropical Depression 11. And that kind of kick-started uh, the genesis process and all the convective feedback processes. But now you see the suppressed phase of the Kelvin wave passing over. And this is going to impart a little bit more dry air suppression in the atmosphere and that typically will want to reduce the chances for tropical cyclone formation. The fact that we already have a tropical cyclone is helping us a little bit. Now it's not likely to get that strong though. But for impacts to the islands, for direct impacts to the islands, this is a graphic that I put together. Again, this is coming, this is not any official sources, just looking me looking at the model guidance basically. Um, but again, right now, your very low end threats are kind of dictated in either the shading of either no shading at all, kind of this just darker gray, or basically your very light tannish colors right here. Your low end threat actually starts right about here. And again, you can kind of see that's north of St. John's right now. That's north of St. John's. This is uh, pretty much all, this is well, pretty much all the areas. That's Puerto Rico, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Bridgetown, Barbados right there, Kingstown right there, Kingston. Um, so again, mostly you're going to see if any threats to the area were to happen based on the current National Hurricane Center forecast track, they'd be pretty much to the north of St. John's. Again, there's not much of a significant risk for St. John's itself. But if we take a look here at the wind speed probabilities, again, St. John's, what you're looking at here, these are in your uh, probabilities, wind speed probabilities based on the Hurricane Center uh, wind speed probabilities uh, map, and this is in percentage. Uh, again, so 34 knots is in blue. That's your tropical storm force winds. Your moderate tropical storm force winds are 50 knots is located in orange, and your hurricane force gusts is in your grayish shading. St. John's only has about a 2% chance of seeing tropical storm force winds. Uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, only about a 3%. Our big winner winning out today almost is Barbuda with a 10% chance of seeing tropical storm force winds. Again, that's not a significant chance at all. So for the most part, this is going to stay well to the north of the islands on this current forecast track. Again, some deviation is to be expected, but again, for the most part, uh, the islands seem uh, to be kind of missing out on this. And again, if you live south here, we've got a couple of people living south, especially in Barbados and southward. If you live down here, Barbados, southward, you know, you know, Bridgetown, Kingston, uh, kind of southward, even uh, Port de France here, southward. You have no risk of seeing tropical storm force winds or any significant impacts. Could there be some chance of maybe some rain in this area? Uh, yes, but directly associated with uh, impacts to what will be Josephina? No. No impacts expected down here at all. No impacts currently expected for San Juan, Puerto Rico, or St. Croix. Uh, St. Croix really doesn't even have a chance of seeing tropical storm force winds, only about a 2% chance. Uh, but basically, your best chances is going to be right near Barbuda with a 10% chance. And I should have marked it. Shame on me for not doing that. But um, it should be marked. And I'll kind of go back and change this. But again, no significant impacts. Again, your low end threat is going to be in this region extending up to near Barbuda. Uh, but otherwise than that, no significant impacts for the islands at all. Uh, maybe other than some you know gusty winds at time, especially near Barbuda. Maybe some rain, but that's kind of stretching it there uh, for sure. Now, if we take a look here at the GFS forecast, it's the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. Again, your higher cyclonic spin is in your darker shades of red here. And again, we can just kind of run this forward throughout the next about uh, 72 hours. This big ridge of high pressure is now beginning to kind of abate, and that's allowing what the will be uh, Josephina or whatever is left of Josephina to kind of move off towards the north here. And again, this is probably going to pass far enough to the north of the islands. It just probably won't be a significant threat. And you can kind of see by this time, the GFS actually degenerates this into an open wave. You can kind of see these kinks in the isobars right here. That's just an open wave at that point. So it may not even be a system 
at that point. You can see by the next, uh, you know, five days from now, that's moving well to the north here. No significant concerns to the islands at all. And the European forecast model, for what it's worth, as well, out to 72 hours, again, moving north of the islands. This big ridge of high pressure is going to start to abate because you can see there's a piece of uh, trough and energy out here. That's going to allow this ridge to kind of shift further east and uh, weaken with time. That's going to allow what uh, is left of Josephina or Josephina itself to kind of move off towards the north-northwest here and kind of stay well away from land at that point in time. So again, not really expecting any deep concerns for the islands. Again, your biggest impacts are going to be uh, near Barbuda, maybe at best some gusty winds maybe at best some heavy rain from time to time but this is expected to pass well to the north of the island so really and truly we're going to start dropping uh, chances further south again this is just kind of a placeholder but the chances of seeing any significant um you know impacts especially farther south than st john's is highly unlikely so we're probably going to start moving this low this very low end threat further to the north and just kind of leave it to be this very low threat right there so that's probably what we're going to do and uh, you know be kind of reflected in the next update but again the upper ocean heat content real quickly just to kind of take a look at that uh, again your higher end of the scale is going to be in these greens and uh, yellows and oranges and reds that's basically your upper third of the scale and you can really see how it's kind of poking out here in the gulf and all the way in through the caribbean Notice there is one cold eddy right here in the Gulf of Mexico, but other than that, this area is pretty favorable, and again, the activity should start to, to kind of ramp up as we head into the latter part of August and into September, so it never hurts to start getting your hurricane preparedness plans ready. Know what you're going to do in the event that you have to evacuate or the, the event of a, a tropical cyclone tropical storm hurricane tropical depression even coming your way what are you going to do in that sort of scenario how are you going to be best prepared with everything else going on in the world right now so never too early to take those you know never too early to kind of get your hurricane preparedness plans ready uh, you know if you got them put them into you know put them into plan you know kind of practice what you're going to do because practice 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 it will make perfect and then when it's time to actually execute hopefully nothing to, you know hopefully nothing comes anyone's way but if something you know comes your way you have to execute it you know what you're doing you know what your game plan is and you're ready to go a lot of the times people die because of the lack of preparedness and they choose to ride out the storm storm surge gets them that's the leading cause we don't want anyone here to be another casualty in another statistic all right so with that being said hope you'll have a great rest of your afternoon and evening of course i will be doing periodic updates on twitter at micromally one go follow me there links will be down in the description down below i'll talk to you guys some more tomorrow stay safe everyone i'll talk to you guys tomorrow